giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the show where the tea is sweeter and the bots are hotter than the Florida sun. It's the week one Southeast Sweet Tea region preview show. Now, to introduce ourselves, my name is John Fogarty. I'm an alumni of FTC Team 3864 Global Force and FRC Team 1102 Making Magic. And now I work as a full-time software engineer and head coach of FRC Team 1102 Making Magic. <laughs> And I'm Marshall Fred, uh, a professional zebra corn wrangler and uh, mentor for Team 900. I'm Kristen Chong. I'm a lead uh, strategy and design mentor for Team 2655 Flying Platypie. Um, and I'm, a, uh, I'm an applications engineer for analog devices. And I am Brian Bautista, Master of Ceremonies for Florida an alumni of Team 179, Children of the Swamp, and mentor for Team 1902, Exploding Bacon. So tonight we're going to give you a little preview on the events coming up later this week in the southeast region of the U.S., and we're going to give you a few discussion topics later on in the show. So Marshall, why don't you kick things off for us? Absolutely. So to start things off, let's talk about the Palmetto Regional, my favorite regional. Uh, which this year promises to be another exciting event, as always. We have many local favorites returning, like 281, the Green Villains, 342, the Burning Magnetos, 343, Metal in Motion, 3489, Category 5, which I think we're seeing a video of now, 3490, Viper Drive, 4451, Robots Garage, and their sister team, 6366, Ramrods Robotics. We also have a lot of common visitors that are returning, such as Team 108, the Sigma Cat, and, sorry, Sigma Cat Robotics, Team 744 Shark Attack, and Team 1369 Minotaur, all from Florida. Then we have 2614 Mars, representing West Virginia, as well as 3140 Flagship and 4020 Cybertribe, coming over from Tennessee. Uh, 640, 694 Stay Pulse out of New York is coming down. And 846, the Funky Monkeys from San Jose, California, are coming all the way to South Carolina to add some significant strength to the field. It'll be interesting to see how South Carolina's best can hold up to the out-of-state competition. As always, we can expect uh -huh. strong ro showings out of Robots Garage. They have earned their way to Worlds all but one year of their existence. This year, they're bringing in a rare occurrence in South Carolina, a turret shooter with auto-aiming. One of South Carolina's oldest teams in three, is 343 Metal in Motion, and they've been teasing on Facebook their latest robot, which looks to be a short trench bot with a turreted shooter and a simple climber. A dark horse team that has been showing some steady improvement and has been an alliance captain at both events. They attached, attended last year is 1293 the Panda Maniacs, my personal favorite. <laughs> One team that always seems to find their way into the finals out Palmetto is 2614 Mars. While they struggle early on, just like the rest of us, they always get their issues resolved quickly and end up an alliance captain or being picked early on in the draft. We have heard that we'll see a few EveryBot clones coming out of South Carolina this year. Look for those teams to dominate the early stages while the shooter teams get dialed in. I fully expect teams 694 and 846 with their strong pedigrees to come in and flex some major muscle at Palmetto. But hopefully, some top-tier South Carolina teams can pair up and get the blue banners in state. So next, 36 teams are heading up to the Peachtree District's Gainesville event to be the district's first test subjects for this year's game challenge. It's going to be interesting to see how many teams are better prepared for the event given the extra weekend they had to work on their robots. Thank goodness for no more bag day, am I right? 
<laughs> we don't seem to have a major out-of-state powerhouse coming in this year to Gainesville, which is a surprise to many of us. We have a visitor or two from Indiana in the Quadrangles, 34-94, and a few visitors from North Carolina in 69-32 Smart, 31-96 Spork, and 57-27 The Megabytes. Peachtree teams in the past have had much bigger powerhouse teams to worry about coming in and potentially stealing their hardware, but this year the field doesn't seem as easy to call. Now, I don't have much info on the bots for this year's uh, competition going into the district event, but we should have some reveal videos coming out tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Um, teams I would keep an eye out for at Gainesville would be 832 Oscar. Uh, over the offseason, it looked like they were doing a whole lot to up their software game. 14-14 uh, IHOT, who are coming off their best season in 2019. 1683 uh, the Techno Titans. 1648 G3 Robotics. 1746 Auto, a team that always builds incredible machines, but usually needs that little bit of extra time on the software end to get their competition bot ready for the week one event. But I think they're going to benefit a ton from no bag and will be a very scary team as the season progresses. Then we have team 4188, the picture you see on the screen now. They've built themselves a stylish blue and green painted robot with a tie that's a tall high goal shooting robot and has a simple dual hook elevator climbing system. And then rounding things out, we've got teams like 5109 Gladiator Robotics, 6829 Ignite Robotics, Peach Trees only Einstein finalists last year, and 69-19, the Commodores. With the early season events, it's always a show to see who comes in the most prepared and who's paying attention to what teams are fixing their issues over the course of the event. It'll be interesting to think, see how things turn out. So what are things looking at, like for Wake County, Kristen? So Wake, Cal Wake County is shaping up to be a fierce competition with the likes of 5190, 2642, 2682, 6502 dark side who we saw on premiere night last night uh dang awesome shooter i must say uh 2059 hitchhikers 4561 terabytes 5511 cortex not 7890 sequence and 7671 fire hazard 5511 cortex had a super strong end game last year and they won this event last year with 4561 terabytes will it happen again we'll wait to see uh, I suspect 4561 will also probably be a really strong contender for engineering inspiration at this event. Uh, question mark team for, uh, I guess, 5190. They had a couple of top students graduate off the team last year. Um, I'm pretty confident that they can keep the keep up the strong streak that they've been that they've had over the last several years. Um, so I'm excited to see what they come out with. 2059 is usually extremely strong early season, so I'm expecting them to do really well at this event. Um, Sequence had an explosive rookie season last year, um, and I really can't wait to see what they put out this year for their second year. Then we have everyone's favorite OG bucket bot sensation, 7671 Fire Hazard, also competing this weekend. And so I'm expecting them to build another simple but effective robot that'll do extremely well early season. 2642 and 2682 usually have a pretty good showing, and I suspect Boneyard will be a pretty strong contender for chairmans, especially after their finalist win at Worlds last year. Uh, I really love the work that they're doing for their students um, on the autism spectrum, and they Im implemented quiet rooms at all the events last year in North Carolina. Um, mental health is an issue near and dear to my heart, so I'm really excited to see them get a lot of positive attention for it. We've got one rookie team competing at Wake County this year, one brave rookie team, 8090 Mavnesium. Um, excited to kind of see what they come out with. So what are things looking like in Chesapeake? All right. So going north of Wake County is the Chesapeake District's Haymarket event. Historically, this event has some of Chesapeake's biggest hitters and comes with a showing of a great elimination bracket. However, the qualification rounds often boast a little less than stellar performance due to the status of a week one event. Even though they won't be at their best, you can count on the usual spec, uh, suspects to be at the top. Several teams that have a lot to prove after some shortfalls last year. One of those teams is 4472 Supernova. In 2019, this team showed a fairly competitive robot coming up with two silver medals for their district events. However, a crash left their intake in shambles at DCMP, ending their season off on a relatively sour note. 
This year, they're hoping to get some redemption and win their way back to Worlds. They boast an impressive six-ball autonomous that they are currently fine-tuning to be under that 15-second mark. And they also showed an impressive consistency of three out of five inner port shots at the Week Zero scrimmage in Richmond yesterday, with a knack for elevators as well. Expect this team to provide a lot of endgame points. Another team with a good record at Haymarket is Team 1731, Fresta Valley Robotics. This team is also looking to come back with a from a less than stellar performance in 2019, plus a self-destruction of their robot at IROC in 2019. As you can see in this picture, they're opting for a swerve drive, which gives potential for that Fresta to being the for the Fresta to bring the first highly competitive swerve bot in CHS history. Also wanting to return to their glory after missing elims at DCMP last year, 2363 Triple Helix will be another top competitor. Rumors of a short turret brings possibility of an agile cycler with drivers that have some practice that can easily dominate a week one event. Others with good records at Haymarket uh, and good reveals as of this week are 614 Nighthawks, 623 Oakton Cougar Robotics, 836 Robo Bees, and 1418 Ve Victus. Fire predictions, rumors, and interactions during the build season. Fun host Griffin predicts that the underdogs of the event will be 620, the Wart Bots, and rookie 8230 Koi Bots. All right, so next we're going to have our segment called This or That, and today we're going to have our hosts and Twitch chat select which of the two options is more likely to occur. Starting out, we've got ourselves a spicy one. Which is more likely to occur at Palmetto? Two South Carolina teams win the event or no South Carolina teams win the event? What do you guys think? I don't know. I'm going to go with no... Uh no South Carolina teams win it. So are we saying Alliance captain or the Alliance in general? Just in general. Do you think? I and suspect you might see at least one South Carolina team on an Alliance. What does Twitch chat think while we're at it, while we're going through this? What about you, Marshall Fred? What are you feeling? <laughs> Oh, you're I am muted. I you know. I I think I'd like to stay, see it stay in state if we can. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing some no South Carolina teams in Twitch chat. No faith. No faith. What is this? I I think my my bold prediction is that there will be at least one South Carolina team on a winning alliance. How's that? There you go. There we go. We gotta we gotta at least give them a little bit. And I'm hoping for two. And I'm hoping one of them is the Pandemaniacs. Uh, and just as a little side statistic, uh, in the Alliance era, two South Carolina teams winning the Palmetto Regional has only happened three times, 2008, 2010, and 2015. Uh, and it has, and the other has happened, uh, and no South Carolina teams in the finals has happened four times, 2006, 2009, 2014, and 2018. Uh, and with a ton of, of great out-of-state teams coming it'll be interesting to see what happens um so we'll see what what the event uh has to give us but i i think robots garage is always in the in the fight let's put it that way so we'll see what happens this year i definitely wouldn't bet against them i agree with that so next, we've got a uh, this or that for the Peachtree District Gainesville event. Both last year's first seed and eventual winning alliance captain, as well as the Chairman's Award winning team from last year at, at Gainesville are returning this year. So which is more likely to happen? And this one might be a little more obscure for those of you who don't follow Peachtree that closely. Which is more likely? 1648 G3 Robotics winning Chairman's again at this event or 6919 the Commodores likely winning the event? <clears throat> I personally would say that 1648 is more likely to win chairmans. Uh, they do a lot of cool stuff uh, with their drones for kids program, uh, and they have a lot of really good outreach. Um, I've followed them along for the last few years that we've been a part of the district, and uh, I that's my feeling on that 
subject is that 1648 is definitely the more likely team uh, to win chairman's, uh, but you've got teams like 4188 Columbus Vegas program that are right up there with them. So you, I you can't say it for sure, but um, I can't call anything about who's going to win the event this year. 6919 had a really solid, simple robot last year that was very consistent at getting that level three hab climb. But I have no idea what the robot looks like this year, so I can't call that at all. And I don't know if you guys have any insight into that, but that's probably – my insight's probably lays in that area. I mean, it's having been there last year um, and having watched the, the Week Zero event in New Hampshire and the one in P&W, it, the, the, the simple everybots that were able to be extremely consistent wound up being extremely, extremely OP at that event or at yeah. those two events. I mean, you're, you're – finalist alliance captain in new england was an every bot um and i th think you're gonna see a lot of i think that might be a pretty big contention so i'm gonna go with you john i think 60 uh 1648 winning chairman's is 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 my pick yeah and twitch chat definitely 100 percent agrees with you on that. <laughs> so, the crowd here <laughs> yeah we've got we've got the crowd behind you so our next question, we'll move on from there, it pertains to North Carolina. Uh, since 2016, neither of the following has occurred in the first event uh, on the North Carolina district calendar. So which is more likely, a team finishing with a higher than 2.33 RP or above, or will there be a single uni at least a single unicorn match? What do you guys think? Twitch chat guys, what do you I'm think? I'm going I'm going with I'm going with 2.33 rank point average cuz yeah. the North Carolina tends to, we don't tend to see unicorn matches until later in the season um, just because of the the way teams are distributed now really depends on on how the game plays out. I think this year it might be possible we see them earlier, but I don't think you're going to see it in week 1. Yeah. And unicorn matches are <laughs> extremely hard, I would say, this year. It's a lot of balls to score. I mean, the only thing I can compare it to would be like, I don't know if it's as hard as the 2017 rank point from getting the boiler full, but it's close as far as scoring those balls is concerned. Obviously, Happy. you've got more teams that are going to be scoring balls than you had people scoring fuel in 2017, but yeah. I think way more yeah but i don't think this early in the season we'll see a lot now we do have dark side at this event um and for anyone that watched the the premiere night last night um which i did their shooter looks stellar fantastic it's not the first year they've built a shooter either um so i'm pretty confident that what they showed us last night is probably really accurate to what they're able to achieve if not you know Maybe it's the, the, the strongest we'll see them, but I, I'm expecting great things out of that team. They usually do extremely well. Shooters is definitely something they've done well in the past. And Twitch chat agrees that the team with a higher than 2.33 RP is definitely the more likely. We're, we're getting very consensus results. In our <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no guessing. And then we're going to take it to the last one. And this one... Uh, We'll see what you have to say about this one, Brian. Uh, the Chesapeake District this year is split into two fields of 40 teams. So will this lower the amount of teams, lower the amount of points that it takes to make Worlds for Chesapeake teams, or will it increase the amount of points that it takes to make to Worlds? Now, I know this is a hard question for you because you're from a state <laughs> without a district system. <laughs> so it's like throwing oh, a curveball. Sorry. Let's see what you think. Let's, let's hear it. What do you think? Okay, from a person that has no district system <laughs> at all, the, like honestly, it would be more likely that it, it will increase the amount of points that it takes to make Worlds, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, with two fields, I mean, I don't know how the point system is going to be split up necessarily for Chesapeake now, now with two fields of 40 teams. Um, the, the bit that I do know from people that have told me about how the district system works, since we are trying to do that here in Florida, uh, we're thinking on it really hard and trying to figure out how it would work. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that it would be easier to increase the amount of points it takes to make it to worlds than lowering it per se for these two forty point uh, for these two forty team fields. 
I think it makes sense statistically also just because the 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 number of matches you play increases you get points for every match that you uh you, there's a potential to earn points for every match you play um so the fact that there are now two fields of 40 teams each you've got 80 teams as opposed to i'm not sure when it was in the previous years but um more teams and more fields equals more matches. So I, I have to side with you on that one. I think it's going to be a higher point of uh, point barrier to, to get in. That said, I don't know if it will wind up being more difficult to make it to Worlds versus not. Um, I don't think those two necessarily correlate with each other. Um, but definitely, I think it's going to increase the, the, the points floor. Um, just a quick tidbit. Last year's uh, Chesapeake District was 58 teams total. So we have mm, uh, about a, an increase of, what, 33%? Yeah. Something, yeah. Pretty hefty. It's pretty significant. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's our first non-unanimous decision. We don't have 100% of people voting for it. But increase the amount of points required to make it to Worlds is the, the Twitch chat. Uh, vote for this one uh, so yeah um, that's our segment of this or that for this week and um, that's really all the time we have for you guys tonight so thanks to everyone for coming out and hanging out with us and of course fun needs your help to stay loud live and independent please consider giving your support to fun by joining fun nation with a subscription or bits on twitch or potentially becoming a patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or just let people in first know that this is the place to get information on what your team needs to know. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or here, of course, live on Twitch. If you're still watching our show live, our next show is going to be Mouth of the South. On behalf of Marshall Frid, Chris, and Brian, myself, and of course our <laughs> producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you all for tuning in, and thanks to all our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on the FRC Southeast Sweet Tea Region Recap. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.